Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I want to share something that is relevant to every person at the moment in the context of the spread of COVID-19 across the world. Now, maybe if you're in Africa or um, Papua New Guinea, where the pandemic is over, this is not necessarily of any relevance. But for many parts of the world where COVID-19 is still spreading and continuing to circulate, we've got a problem where we need to control the circulation of the virus. Now, it's very important to know, people keep on uh, describing COVID-19 as just another cold or a flu. Believe me, this is a pretty serious infection when you look at the impact of the spike protein, not just in terms of severe disease, but also in terms of the longer term um, bits. And so that's very, very important. And I think that as I have tried to rack my brain with regards to how to manage and how to support strategies across the, um, across the world, I realize that we have to find innovative solutions in order to help make a difference. So what I'm sharing with you here now is really important thinking. And this is something that you can do. This is something that you can encourage your family to do. So let's start with an important piece of research. As usual, we start with research. What does the evidence tell us? We've been hearing for some time that vitamin D is not relevant in terms of COVID-19 and so on. And they did studies looking at whether or not COVID-19 infection was stopped with vitamin D. I don't think that was the right study. I think they should have looked at whether or not severe disease was impacted by vitamin D supplementation and having, more importantly, adequate vitamin D levels. So here is this study that was recently published. This is in January 2023. Protective effect of vitamin D supplementation on COVID-19 related intensive care hospitalization and mortality definitive evidence from meta-analysis and trial sequential analysis. So this is essentially where they've gotten a number of studies together that were done and they picked good studies with regards to good blinding and so on to look at the outcomes. This was done in Italy. You can see the primary writer here is Cristiano Argano from um, Italy. And this study also had no particular conflicts of interest, uh, no conflicts of interest. Uh, the publication was supported by in pharma study. And um, effectively what they found in conclusion, this is January 2023, let's look at this. In conclusion, the positive results highlighted again with vitamin D now validated by these studies, suggest an indisputable association between vitamin D supplementation and protective effect on ICU admission and can be considered definitive evidence. Okay, really important. So it's considered definitive ed evidence that vitamin D supplementation has an impact on the risk of intensive care. Now, you have to get this in context because at the moment we have less severe COVID-19. And so you would ask, well, what difference does it make? Please remember that vitamin D is a vitamin. That means it is essential for your body. Critically, it can only be, your body can only get it either through sunlight or your diet. So these are very important points. It is a vitamin and it is essential. So therefore, it means you should want to know that everybody, every single person has adequate levels of vitamin D. And so when I had done a post on this recently, uh, it, if you're interested, you can join the Substack. But I've done a post on this all the way in September, pointing out the confusion around vitamin D and highlighting some important points. This is the bit that I want to say in terms of the patients who are vitamin D deficient. This is a bigger image of it. Just take a look at this. They looked at 3,000 people at that time. And when you look carefully, this red line 
is the baseline for indicating vitamin D deficiency. Look at this population. Almost, it was 86% of the population was vitamin D deficient when they did the study. And even after they supplemented them, you can see in the different cohorts, even with the very high dose, a proportion were still deficient. Even more importantly, reflect on this. This red line represents deficiency, but it doesn't actually represent sufficiency. So the top line for the therapeutic range is up to 400. So you would assume that somewhere around 200 is probably the best place to be. And if you actually look at this, only a tiny fraction of the population, even after supplementation, got to about 200. That's very important. And so it highlights the fact that we have to think about vitamin D as firstly what its purpose is, a vitamin. It's there to support the body, it supports your immune system. This is where it gets very interesting. And it comes back to another paper that I highlighted. And if anyone saw my video on rhymes with pectin, I can't say the word because it's still considered a, a dangerous word to say on certain platforms. But this particular medication, when I looked at it, rhymes with pectin, um, and I'll, I'll show you here, uh, this, this uh, interesting breakthrough on what this drug can do was really insightful. And if you haven't seen it yet, there is a link at the bottom for you to click on and you'll be able to watch it. And in it, I focus on a very specific enzyme called PAC1. So I got this from this really critical study, Mechanisms of SARS-CoV-2 Entry into Cells. This was um, published some time ago, and it was looking at the mechanism by how the virus can get into cells. But actually, beyond this one, there was probably an even more important study that was looking in detail at how the virus got into cells. And this one was studying what the virus did when it was trying to infect a cell in the nose. So they had created these organelles, and here you have these cilia, and these cilia, the virus can bind to it, it then goes down these cilia to then enter into the cell. But guess what it does? And these little microvilli that are only a fraction of the height, because they, in order for the virus to get out, it needs to get above this mucus layer. So what does it do? When it infects the cell, it triggers specific proteins to make these tiny little microvilli grow like trees. And then the virus can spread within 48 hours. So it's a tremendous strategy for the virus. And this was the point with also rhymes with pectin and vitamin D. It inhibits PAC1. That's the enzyme that it is able to use to cause these microvilli to become tree-like structures. So in effect, when you look at a population, if you are able to, to inhibit that ability of the virus to spread, even if you bring it down by a small percentage point, you will then significantly reduce the ability of the virus to spread in the population. That's what we need now. We need strategies to reduce the circulation of SARS-CoV-2, because although you don't see severe disease, what you see is increasing mortality in the months after. That's a very important point and not one to be underestimated. As we see rising mortality, excess mortality rates across the world, it is tied to COVID-19 infection, but only in areas where the immune system is unable to suppress the spread of Omicron. As I said, this doesn't happen in Africa, it doesn't happen in PNG. I'm not allowed to tell you what the elephant is in the rest of the world, but you can work that out for yourself. So the point is, if there is anything that you can do, one, make sure that you are not in this group of people who have a low vitamin D. Two, encourage everyone around you, especially in temperate countries, to make sure you have adequate levels of vitamin D. 
And if you think about it, the fact that the virus does not spread as well in the summer months could simply be down to the fact that vitamin D levels are higher in the summer than it is in the winter months. This is something that everyone can do. And this is something I'd encourage all of us to try and make a difference with, because in the end, circulation of COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 is not going to be of value to any one of us. I hope you found this valuable and please make sure you do your bit. Have a great evening.